Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, co-translational targeting to the endoplasmic reticulum of proteins. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, so far we have discussed how the translocon is going to produce type 1 membrane-spanning proteins, which, remember, are these single um, membrane-spanning proteins, which have a single uh, membrane-spanning domain, uh, which have their amino terminus in the inside of the ER lumen and their carboxyl terminus on the uh, cytoplasmic side. Although we have discussed how this is going to be reversed, basically, when you go and look at the um, intracellular and extracellular, sorry, extracellular and intracellular uh, aspects of the plasma membrane, and the amino terminus will end up on the extracellular aspect, and the carboxyl terminus on the intracellular aspect. Okay, so that's how you get type 1 proteins. What we now want to discuss is how you get type 2 proteins, and it should be pretty simple, because if we go back to our original picture here, where we have our signal sequence still bound to the translocon, our ribosome was feeding the polypeptide through. But what we discussed is if you want to make a type 1 membrane-spanning protein, what you need to do is have a protease that's going to come over here and chop off the signal sequence and leave the amino terminus then in the ER lumen, basically. Okay, now in the case of type 2 um, membrane spanning proteins, you don't do that. You don't have this protease. This protease does not come and cut off the signal sequence. So instead, what happens is the ribosome keeps feeding the protein uh, through um, the translocon until it finishes, basically. So it gets to the end of the mRNA, and then it just feeds the last of this protein through the translocon of the ribosome, of the, sorry, through this translocon, and then the carboxyl terminus ends up on the ER lumen side, and the amino terminus ends up on the, ex, uh, on the cytoplasmic side. So that is how you get a type 2, um, two membrane spanning protein. And then obviously the protein just dissociates from the translocon. So the translocon releases the protein, and this signal sequence region remains within uh, the um, ER membrane, basically. It's the bit that spans the membrane. Okay, so that's how you get a type 2 uh, membrane-spanning protein. Now let's discuss how you get proteins which span the membrane more than once, basically. Okay, so firstly, let's start off with these proteins uh, that... Um, oh, and I should stress, type 2 proteins, they won't ever have one of these transfer signals that we had in the case of the type 1s, uh, because they don't need it. They don't need another um, portion to come and bind to the translocon. They have this signal sequence that was there from the start. Okay, so now let's discuss proteins which span the membrane multiple times. Now let's begin, basically, with the ones which are going to have their amino terminus in the uh, cytosolic side. So you're going to, again, feed this uh, polypeptide through. You're not going to get a protease coming and cleaving off this signal sequence. And now, what will happen is if you want to get more, um, more membrane-spanning domains, what will happen is you will get a transfer uh, signal coming down. So basically, a transfer signal will come down here and bind to the translocon. So let me show that. Okay, oops, we'll need some more paper. Okay, right, so, um, we have the translocon then, here. Okay, and then we have um, this uh, polypeptide coming down here, and it's going to make this transfer signal here, that's going to bind to the translocon. Now, you already have this signal sequence from the start that is there, and that means that the amino terminus is still on the cytoplasmic side of the ER membrane. Okay, so here is our uh, ribosome still producing the polypeptide, and here is our piece of mRNA. And here are our chaperone proteins binding here. Okay, so let's colour everything in. So, um, in pink, then, we have um, the translocon protein, here, 
And I should um, stress that the translocon is one pro well one uh, structure. Even though I've drawn it as two rectangles, that's supposed to be we've sort of chopped in between it. It's like a tube, a, cylindri a cylindrical tube. Okay. Uh, then um, we have our polypeptide coming down here in purple. Okay. And then we have these two important regions. This original signal sequence in blue here, which is bound to the translocon from the start. And now this new sequence called the transfer sequence, which is also bound to the translocon. Then we also have these chaperone proteins down here, which are protecting the nascent polypeptide from the horrors of the endoplasmic reticulum. And then we have our ribosome up here in orange, which is still producing our polypeptide from that mRNA strand that is... Um, it's well that is moving through it. Right. Okay. Now, when this transfer sequence, and I'll just label that up. So this is a transfer sequence. When this transfer sequence binds to the translocon, it's going to stop uh, the ribosome from being able to just keep feeding this polypeptide through the translocon. So basically, what's going to happen again is that the ribosome is going to back up basically and uh, it's going to start synthesizing polypeptide that's going to remain on uh, the um, on the cytoplasmic side of the ER membrane. Okay, so now if you wanted just to produce a protein which had two uh, membrane-spanning um, domains, i.e. just span the membrane twice, this would be perfect. All that you'd have to do is now um, um, disassociate this protein from uh, from the translocon and what you'd get is something that looked like this so you'd have your protein and here if this is the um, if this is the phospholipid by there then it would span like so and here are these signal sequences and these transfer sequences that are still basically uh, within the membrane basically so they're the portions that are spanning the membrane okay like so. So here's the transfer sequence. And then the polypeptide I'll just colour in pink. And it will still have its chaperone proteins on the um, uh, intraluminal side here. Okay, so here are these chaperone proteins. Like so. Uh, protecting it, as I say, from the horrors of the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, right. Uh, so... That's how you can get a protein with uh, two membrane-spanning um, domains. How can you get more than two? Well, what you can do is you can uh, dislocate it. Well, you can dissociate it from the translocon. So this portion can dissociate. But then what can happen is the protein can synthesize another signal region, basically. So it will make another signal sequence here. So another one of these blue signal sequences. And then the whole process can begin again. That signal sequence can bind to the translocon, and uh, then you'll start feeding it through again. So let me show this. So if this is our translocon here, okay, uh, then, oh dear, the membrane's in the way, but imagine that membrane is not there, okay? And then what will happen is the ribosome will continue to translate the pro protein, basically, here. So here's the ribosome producing the protein, and that protein will now continue to be fed through the translocon back into the endoplasmic reticulum. So you're starting basically to make your third membrane-spanning uh, domain, basically. Okay, and then if you want to make a fourth, all you need to do is then make a transfer region, which will bind again to this uh, translocon, and you can continue this process on, basically. Okay, so that's how you can continue to um, produce more uh, membrane-spanning domains, more uh, membrane-spanning um, portions of the protein. So how you can get it to span the membrane more than twice. Okay, so that's how you can do it if you want the amino terminus to be on the extracellular aspect of the membrane. If you want it to be on the intra, uh, sorry, if you want it. To that's how you can get do it if you want the amino terminus to be on the cytoplasmic side of this ER membrane. What if you want the amino terminus to be on the luminal side? Well, all you need to do, basically, is chop off the signal sequence at the start. If you chop off this signal sequence at the start using a protease, then 
and you'll have the amino terminus on the ER luminal side, okay? Then what will happen is you'll get some transfer uh, signal coming along that will bind to the translocon, causing the ribosome to back up and start synthesizing the polypeptide uh, in the um, cytoplasmic uh, compartment. Now, when we were looking at type 1 uh, membrane-spanning uh, proteins, which remember were these proteins which span the membrane once and have their amino terminus on the ER luminal side, uh, we saw how how um, the uh, well the ribosome will then finish translation and you'll end up with a carboxyl terminal on the inside uh, on the cytoplasmic side. Now, if you wanted to continue on and produce more membrane-spanning domains, then all you'd do is produce another signal sequence. The um, the pro the initial the initial polypeptide that's already had its membrane-spanning portion um, uh, finished will then dissociate from this um, translocon, and then what can happen is the signal sequence can associate with the translocon again, and you'll continue this process again, and you'll get your um, second and third. Uh, membrane spanning portion. So let me just show that in a picture. So uh, what's happened is we produced this um, protein which has its amino terminus on the uh, intraluminal aspect, so it's uh, facing the ER lumen. So let's say this is the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, now um, I've drawn this rather large, so I have to um, put the translocon over here. Okay, now if you want to uh, get more membrane spanning domains, what you will do is you'll continue synthesizing it and you'll create another signal sequence basically. So, here, let's say this is another signal sequence over here. Okay, and basically the ribosome will continue uh, sequence, well, producing this, synthesizing this. So, here's the ribosome with its mRNA coming through, and here comes the polypeptide. And here's the other side of the translocon here. Okay, so let me just finally colour these in. So this is a signal sequence that's going to allow you to put in more membrane uh, spanning regions. So this is going to produce the second membrane spanning region. And then if you put in a transfer sequence, you can produce the third. So you can continue on the process, basically, of creating these membrane spanning regions through these translocons in the uh, membrane of the ER lumen. Uh, oh, well, the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, and this over here, remember, was one of these transfer signals over here. Okay, and uh, that's how you can get uh, polypeptides with multiple membrane-spanning uh, domains uh, where they have their amino terminus on the uh, intraluminal side.